Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar focusing on Qualifications Wales' proposals for the mathematics and numeracy area of the, learn of the new curriculum. My name is June Jenkins and I'm a Senior Qualifications Manager of Qualifications Wales, working on the Qualified for the Future project, which considers how qualifications at 16 will need to change to complement and support the new curriculum for Wales. This webinar will be delivered in English, although a Welsh medium version of this presentation will be given this afternoon for those who prefer to access the webinar in Welsh. As we have over 100 people attending this webinar, unfortunately it won't be possible to ask questions verbally, although if you do have any questions you can post them using the question and answer function and we will try to answer as many as we can during this, the time that we have available today. I won't rehearse the history of the project now, but will very briefly describe the decisions that have been made to date. Last year, we consulted on the high level approach that we should take to figuring out what the new curriculum for Wales could mean for qualifications. There was broad support for our proposed approach, which included setting out some guiding principles for shaping the range of qualifications that should be available to future 14 to 16 year olds. We decided that all publicly funded qualifications for 14 to 16 year olds should clearly support the new curriculum for Wales, be available bilingually, which is a major shift in our regulatory approach, and thirdly, provide a coherent and inclusive choice of qualifications to schools that offer something for everyone and caters to the needs of all 14 to 16 year olds. I'll be coming back to these guiding principles and what they will mean in practice, so please bear them in mind. The other big decision we took last year was about the future of GCSEs. We decided that in future, the main qualifications taken by 14 to 16 year olds should still be called GCSEs. We know from our research that the GCSE name is familiar, trusted and respected. This is important because it ensures that young people's hard work and achievements are recognised and valued wherever they go next. In sticking with the brand, we were clear that the current GCSE qualifications will need to change, possibly quite substantially, so that they remain relevant and fit for the future. So please remember that when we talk about future GCSEs, we're not necessarily talking about the traditional exam-based assessment that you might typically associate with a GCSE. We're talking about GCSEs with more flexible content and possibly quite different approaches to assessment. The first step to agree in those changes is to agree which subjects and qualifications we need and that is the focus of our current consultation. So what happens next? Well, in three years from now, the first group of learners to follow the new curriculum will be in year eight and starting to think about which qualifications to study when they turn 14. That's why we're consulting now to gather views on what choice of qualifications should be available to those learners. We want learners to have a choice of qualifications that will reflect their school's curriculum, engage them in their learning and help them to realise the four purposes of the curriculum qualifications that are trusted and that will prepare and help them to move successfully forward in their lives, learning and work. Later this year, over the summer, we will carefully consider the feedback we get before confirming our decisions on our proposals. In the meantime, we'll be doing some more research and engaging with stakeholders to look at how assessment could be different in future. As we do so, we want to make sure we draw not only from academic research and evidence, but also to work closely with educators, learners, carers, employers and others to shape their, view, to shape their views and to look at how things could be different going forward. And of course, last year was a year like no other. We've all had to adapt and to learn to do things differently in a very short amount of time. We're keen to learn from the changes we are, we've seen to assessing qualifications to help shape how we design and assess the next set of qualifications. We want new qualifications to be ready in plenty of time for when the first curriculum cohort reaches year 10 in 2025. And just as a reminder, we're talking here about qualifications that will be awarded for the first time in 2027. Turning now to the current consultation. 
The proposals focus on which GCSEs and other Made for Wales qualifications will best complement the new curriculum for schools and learners. Remember, each school will develop its own curriculum and each school, will, each school curriculum will be different, but all must be broad and balanced. So we want to make sure that the range of qualifications will help them to reflect that uniqueness, breadth and balance. Before I talk about the proposals, proposals themselves, there are just a few points I'd like to make about how we've developed them. Qualifications Wales has been closely involved with the development of the new curriculum since its inception. More recently, over the past couple of years, we've been engaging and consulting with a wide range of stakeholders and specialists to consider what the curriculum could mean for qualifications. But I should stress, these are still only proposals and their ideas about what the future could look like. We genuinely want to hear as many views as possible from a broad and varied range of stakeholders to help us to agree on the right way forward. These are really important decisions about how we want to help future young people to progress and succeed. As well as looking at the curriculum, we've also considered what we have at the moment in terms of qualifications to make sure that the changes will be uh, will bring manageable and sustainable improvements. This is not about change for the for the sake of it. We've not taken a one size fits all approach. We've looked at each of the main areas of the curriculum and asked what choice is most likely to provide the best experiences for learners and the most fl flexibility for schools. We've also tried to bear in mind what will be viable and feasible. There are only so many choices that schools can realistically offer to their learners within the resources they have, and only so many bespoke, made for Wales qualifications that a system the size of the one we have here in Wales can sustain. Our focus today is on qualifications that should be available to support the new mathematics and numeracy curriculum area. In this area at present, there are two Made for Wales GCSEs available to schools, a GCSE in Mathematics and a GCSE in Mathematics Numeracy. These were introduced in 2015 to replace the previous GCSE Mathematics qualification. It will be 2027 before the first cohort of learners are awarded the new qualifications. So the current qualifications would have been in use for around 12 years. Alongside these Made for Wales GCSEs, schools can currently choose from a range of other qualifications related to this area. And these include a GCSE in Statistics, which is a Design for England qualification only, um, available only, sorry, through the medium of English. We have a WJC Level 2 Additional Mathematics qualification, which is taken by approximately 10% of the cohort in Wales each year and helps support progression to AS level mathematics. Um, and that one is available bilingually. Qualifications of differing sizes at entry level, level one and level two of the credit and qualifications framework for Wales in various aspects of mathematics and numeracy, including financial education are also available. Some of these are available bilingually and others are available in English only. It is our intention that qualifications in disciplines related to this area will continue to be available to schools and learners, provided that they meet our guiding principles and that they do not replicate or duplicate the main Made for Wales qualifications in this area. As mentioned previously, in coming up with these proposals, we have discussed our thinking with a range of different stakeholders, but it is important to emphasise again that these are only proposals at this stage. And we genuinely want to hear your views on what qualifications will best reflect the agreed principles, as well as any thoughts that you might have on what needs to be done differently. In considering the mathematics and numeracy area of learning and experience, our aim has been to provide learners with qualifications that allow them to demonstrate what they know and can do. As you are aware, there are three proposals in the mathematics and numeracy section of the consultation. So let's start with proposal one. So proposal one is to create a new combined GCSE mathematics and numeracy qualification to replace the two existing GCSEs in mathematics and mathematics numeracy. 
the new GCSE would be roughly the size of one and a half GCSEs. As you are all probably aware by now, the curriculum guidance for this area does not distinguish between mathematics related content and numeracy related content. The content currently assessed in GCSE Mathematics Numeracy has always been a subset of the GCSE Mathematics content, creating du duplication of assessment and producing an additional assessment burden for learners. We are aware that there have been many benefits or there have been benefits from the introduction of Mathematics Numeracy GCSE, in particular the ability of learners to answer questions given in a real life context. Merging the two GCSEs into a hybrid model would produce a more efficient assessment, whilst retaining what are considered to be the main benefits of both assessments. Our intention is that the combined GCSE would not, would not be as big as two separate GCSEs, giving learners more time for pursuing other subjects. However, the size given in the proposal is there to highlight that there may be a need to have a bigger GCSE than the current single GCSE norm. When developing the qualifications, we fully intend to work closely with stakeholders, including schools, colleges and employers, to translate the content specified in the curriculum guidance into high quality combined mathematics and numeracy qualification. Our second proposal is to create a new small qualification that can be taken in addition to the GCSE to assess a learner's numerical proficiency using an online assessment method. Over one third of learners each year do not achieve, achieve a grade C or above in either GCSE mathematics or GCSE mathematics numeracy. A grade C or above in this area is often a minimum requirement for many jobs and not achieving it limits the routes that learners can take post 16. It can also leave some learners with a negative attitude towards mathematics, having found the subject difficult all through school. Our idea is that a small additional qualification in numerical proficiency could give learners who do not achieve a grade C or above at GCSE a basis from which to progress to further education, training and employment. It could also enable learners to develop their confidence in this subject area and give them a more positive sense of achievement as they leave compulsory education. This additional qualification would not have the GCSE title and would focus on a narrower range of skills and content than the new GCSE. It would assess learners' basic numerical proficiency in different contexts and show that they have the numerical skills to function effectively in the workplace and in everyday life. Assessing the qualification using on-screen assessment methods that are available on demand would potentially allow learners to take the assessment when they are ready to do so. Learners would potentially be able to take the assessment multiple times and get their results quickly. Research has shown that this type of approach to assessment can improve learners' engagement and motivation, even if they have been unsuccessful in, at their first attempt. Our third proposal is to create a Made for Wales Level 2 qualification in additional mathematics. Additional mathematics qualifications are available to learners in various forms across the UK and beyond. Not all schools in Wales offer additional mathematics, Nevertheless, more than 3,000 learners were entered for this Level 2 qualification in 2022. In our engagement with schools, teachers have commented favourably on the content, size and structure of the qualification. It is seen as offering an appropriate challenge to the most able mathematicians within the cohort and provides a useful preparation for learners intending to progress to AS Mathematics. We propose that this qualification should continue to be available in future by putting regulatory requirements in place so that it must be offered as a Made for Wales qualification. We have received requests for this qualification to be an additional GCSE, and this isn't, but this is not possible as the qualification stands as it does not meet the current statutory GCSE approval criteria. Moving on to integral skills, it is our aim that all new qualifications should help learners to develop the integral skills defined in the new curriculum. 
Whilst qualifications such as the Skills Challenge Certificate make this explicit, the development of these integral skills will also be facilitated through other qualifications, including the mathematics and numeracy qualifications where appropriate. That concludes an overview of the proposals and I realise there is a lot of information to take on board and we do really encourage you to complete the consultation which is available on our website and runs up until the 9th of April this year. It's also important to note that these proposals only relate, relate to the range of subjects and if these proposals are accepted there is still a lot of work needed to develop the content and assessment arrangements associated with them. There will be opportunities for engagement and further consultation on these matters at a later date. We welcome questions on the proposals and all the supporting information and we'll strive now to answer as many as we can. I know that my colleagues have been answering them as, as I've been speaking um, and I'll try to answer a few more now. But we will also produce and publish a set of frequently asked questions following this webinar. OK, so I'm just having a look for some of the questions. So I just. Ah, here we have. Here we have one that might be useful. So all subjects should be of equal value. The notion of half a GCSE is a confusing one. So that's been um, sent in. So our intention here is that the combined GCSE would not be as big as two separate GCSEs. And the intention being that that would give learners more time for pursuing other subjects. However, the size given in the proposal is really there to highlight that there may be a need to have a bigger GCSE than the current single GCSE norm, um, and the half size is not a definitive size at this stage. OK, let's have a look if there's something else. So, um, yes, we, we somebody has asked, we've got, we just got, a new, got used to, sorry, we just got used to a new system and it's being changed again. So why not stick to the one system for a while where students can get two qualifications? So in terms of this one, really, by the time the new qualifications are awarded, and that's not until 2027, um, the existing qualifications would have been around for around 12 years. And um, so, so we think that that probably is high time for a change anyway. Okay, just looking at what else we have in there. So um, somebody has asked about lower ability learners um, and learners with poor literacy skills who may find it difficult to access numeracy GCSE qualification at present. Um, and is that being taken into consideration in our future plans? That's a good question. Um, so yeah, the reduction from two GCSEs to one in this area will mean that learners who find this subject difficult will only be entered for one GCSE. Um, and it's essential that obviously learning and improving our literacy skills remains a whole school priority so that learners are able to deal with contextualised problems. Um, but that said, content and assessment design will be considered as we move forward into the next phase of this work. Um, and I would strongly advise you to um, include any specific comments or concerns that you have when you complete the consultation response. So another person has asked, will the additional numerical proficiency qualification be sufficiently valued by employers or, uh, or and make it worthwhile? So that again, as we, we all appreciate, that's a really important question. So to help learners progress, we fully understand the need for the qualification to be valued by employers and for currency for learners. We know from our work on the Skills Challenge Certificate and other qualifications that establishing such value and recognition can take time. It doesn't happen overnight. And it's important, therefore, to get the content and supporting information right and that we would work closely with stakeholders and particularly employers, FE colleges, to explain the value of the qualification to make sure that value is, is known. Um, another good question that, that we get in is, would the numerical proficiency qualification be instead of the level one qualification? So, so is anything else going to exist beyond that? Um, so once we've confirmed the outcomes of this consultation, we will be taking steps to make sure that a suitable range of, of qualifications more broadly remain available to schools and learners, um, not just in mathematics and mathematics numeracy, but across, across the piece really, across all qualifications. 
um, and they will include qualifications at various levels and all different levels. So yes, in answer to that, we will be making sure that other qualifications remain available to learners, provided that they don't duplicate um, the qualifications that we are creating as Made for Wales qualifications. OK, I think I think that's all we've really got time for today, but we would ask you to complete the consultation and ask you to provide as much detail in your responses as possible. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. So thank you for joining us today and goodbye for now. <laughs>